Um, okay, and this now uses all the data. And what we do here is we just say, let's take just the difference from one year to the next, from one cohort to the next, in the average value added of the teachers in that cohort. Okay, that's the x-axis. And then let's look at the change in test scores, raw test scores across cohorts from one year to the next. Okay? And what do we get? This is just, remember, this is not using classrooms. This is just using whole cohorts. Okay? we get a relationship which is incredibly similar to that first relationship I showed you based on classrooms, 0.84. Right? So not using the classroom links, just using the cohorts, I get a very, very similar relationship between value added and test scores. No control variables, nothing. Just changes in time across cohorts. So this, I think, is the strongest evidence we have, and we have some more we have even stronger stuff, but I, I don't think I'll have time to, to show it today. But, but this is, this is the, the big innovation in our paper, uh, testing for bias in these kinds of measures. Right? If this was all just sorting, this thing should be flat. And it's anything but flat. Okay. Let me move to outcomes in adulthood. Um, I said I was going to spend a lot of the time talking about the value-added measures themselves, but I have to do that because if you don't think that the value-added measures are worth anything, then why should we even look at adulthood, right? You're just going to show me that something biased is correlated with outcomes, but that's, that's, not, that's not too hard, right? So hopefully I've convinced you that the measures are unbiased, that they capture something real about performance of that teacher in raising test scores, right? something real about which teachers consistently are better at raising test scores. And it may be that those teachers are better at other things too. But that stuff has to also show up in test scores. Right? That's the key here. So we're going to regress re uh, our adult outcomes on those value-added measures. Okay? First, we're going to use the variation across classrooms in teacher quality. And then I'll show you we can use the cross-cohort design again, right? So I can say, what's the difference in earnings across sequential cohorts of fifth graders that went through a school, and what's the difference in the value added of fifth grade teachers across cohorts in that school? And we'll see that relationship validated again. Okay? Um, again, what's the interpretation? I've, I've talked about this again. It's that overall impact of having the better teacher in fourth through eighth grade, okay? But that could be all of that future resources you get because you had better teachers at a young age, you got into a better high school, you got into a better college, you got into a better training program, whatever it is. All that stuff that contributes to future outcomes. This is college attendance at age 20, okay? Mm. And I should say, well, one thing that you'll see in this graph, is, in the graphs that I'll show you is that um, We'll get relationships that we expect, but there's a lot more noise, right? Predicting next year's test score with all the data we have and the value-added measures turns out to be, we have very strong predictions, right? We can predict next year's test scores very well with value-added and all the control variables. Predicting whether you would go to college or what you earn in the labor market is harder, right? Think about those stories of, you know, the student who ends up making a lot of money but was kind of a misfit in school and didn't do well. Yeah, there's lots of those people out there who do well despite having done poorly in school, right? And there's people who did well in school and do poorly in earnings. There's a lot of noise out there in how someone earns in the labor market. So we'll see that these graphs hold, but there's a lot, the points jump around a lot more. And I should, I should have mentioned this before. Each point is 5% of the data. So we just break up the data into 20 uh, quantiles uh, to give you a sense of the linearity or non-linearity in the data. And then the red line is just the regression line. Um, so this is the percent of people attending college, and that's value added. So we get this highly significant beta. And how to interpret this? It's saying, well, a standard deviation of value added is roughly the difference between 0 and 0.1. Okay? So a standard deviation improvement in teacher value added is equal to about a half a percentage point increase in the probability you go to college over a mean of a little over 37%. Okay? 
So it moves that, that college attendance rate from like 37.5% to 38%. All right? Which may not seem like much, but it's going to be, that's actually going to be worth a lot of money. It's going to be worth a lot of money. Okay? How does that impact college attendance over different ages? I just showed you at age 20, okay? What we can see is that, not surprisingly, the impacts on whether you go to college are biggest for the most common college attendance ages, 18, 19, 20, 21. But importantly, we're going to see positive and significant impacts of having a high value added teacher on college attendance all the way out until the mid-20s. Okay? This population of students in this poor urban city, a lot of them go to school, go to college, and remember we're talking about college or university in a broad sense, training programs, job training programs, certificate programs, okay? They're doing a lot of that out into their mid-twenties. They're not just going to four years of university and finishing, okay? These are non-typical students. This is important. Why? Well, I want to know the impact on earnings. If you're attending college, how much money are you making? Probably not that much. Okay, so what we're going to see later is it's important to look across time and make sure you're looking at earnings at least out into the late 20s because you might see perverse or reversed impacts on earnings here because you're forcing, you're, having a good teacher is pushing you towards investing in a college education instead of going into the labor market at age 19. Okay? So, um, this is a measure of college quality. So you might ask, well, I might be forcing kids to go to college, but it's just those marginal students. So they're going to very bad schools. They're going to the, the worst universities or, or whatever it is. So what we do is we construct a measure of university or college quality um, using the earnings of people who attended that school at age 30. So anybody who attended that school in the mid-90s, I think we use the mid or late 90s, then we look at those students when they're age 30 and ask, what are they earning? And so we have a dollar amount measure of quality, which is not usually how we'd measure quality. Usually it comes out of, some, out of the average test scores of the students at the university or some, some um, uh, U.S. News and World Report or Barron's or these other entities that will go out and it, do lots of interviews and collect a lot of data and create a ranking. The problem with those rankings is that they don't actually go and rank hairdressing training programs, right? They're not going to rank those kinds of programs that these kids attend. Whereas this measure we can use for everybody, okay? Not surprising, you know, the, you know, Columbia and Harvard and Yale and those kinds of schools, their, their students make a lot of money relative to everybody else. And the other thing we can do is we can actually put a dollar amount on not going to college at all, right? For not going to college at all, we'll say, let's just take the earnings of the people who don't go to college at all, and that'll be our measure of quality for that outcome. And what we can see is clearly there's this positive and significant relationship, and it turns out that we can look at this relationship conditional on college attendance and we still see it, which means that some of the impact of having the good teacher is just on the margin of going to school or not, but we also see impacts on the quality of the college that you attend. We also see impacts there, okay? This is the most important graph in the paper, I think. This is earnings at age 28 earnings at age 28. One standard deviation of teacher value added is rough, it gives you roughly $200 more in income per year at age 28. That may seem like a small amount of money, but it is not. Because that's $200 per child for an average of 28 children, okay? And that's one year out of a lifetime. Okay, and I'll show you when we do that calculation for what the present value is of these increased future earnings streams, it's going to come out to a large amount of money. Okay? No questions? I must, I'm extraordinarily well uh, spoken or it's a, it's a shy day. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep going. Um,